Good morning, guys. It is Friday, and you guys will be seeing this video on likely Saturday morning sometime. However, it's been a busy morning. It's like 10.30, and I have been non-stop ever since I came in this morning. So yesterday, I was working on a couple of deals, and a couple of things come together. I had a young fellow come in interested in the Mazda 3. I got an approval on that fella. We've got somebody who's interested in paying cash for the 11 Focus. I just got approval and we're doing the paperwork up right now on the 14 Focus. And I had some inquiries on the 12 Grand Caravan. The vehicle that you don't see sitting on my lot right this moment would normally be sitting behind me. It was sitting right in there yesterday. It is the 14 Kia Rondo that literally just hit the lot two days ago. Uh, had some good customers of ours, they've bought several vehicles from us in the past, uh, come in and last night I allowed them, because they are good customers, to take it out overnight for a little test drive and they have given me a message today that they'll be in. Today, sounds like it's a deal. So. It's been a busy morning, like I said, with Bill being gone. He is actually back tomorrow, which is today when you're watching this. And look, I don't know how I could do this much longer if we were any busier. I'd have to find someone off the street to come help me. But anyways, I've got Jen, my bookkeeper. She's down at Service New Brunswick right now getting something changed over just because A, I don't have the time, nor do I even have the will to want to go down there and deal with that today being shorthanded. So anyways, just wanted to give you an update on how things are going here in the lot. Things have picked up and we are sitting on three or four deals right now that are really coming together. One for sure has come together. The Kia Rondo, likely within the next few minutes they should be in. Uh, we should have that one hopefully sealed up and then we're just waiting on uh, the finance company to get back to us on the Mazda 3. So. It's looking like it's going to be a good day. Hopefully it doesn't keep me here till the late hours of the evening because I'm looking forward to a little bit of a break getting back down to the campground and enjoying my weekend. So I also wanted to give you a little update on the old Mopar. Uh, over the last couple of days, Junior has taken the time to buff the hood, the roof, and the trunk lid uh, due to overspray. And overspray is just basically paint fumes that wander through the air and land. And on this car, that's exactly what happened when I had it here last summer, putting the new rear end gears in it. So we finally got around to doing that. Every time you wash it, you would hear, you just hear like almost like sandpaper. But right now, it is just as smooth as glass. And uh, you can certainly tell the difference with the shine on the car. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of my boy for doing such a good job. I mean, he learned from the best after all. Listen to this. I want my truck to sound like that. So one thing that I was promising in a previous video was to show you the pinstriping details on the 36 Dodge behind me. And he decided to not go with as much pinstriping as even I did, and I find mine to be very minimal. But <clears throat> when you paint a vehicle yourself and you don't have the proper equipment or paint booth, I mean, he had the proper equipment as far as the spray guns and paint and stuff, but we were just doing it in the back shop. So there's bound to be a few blemishes and he cleaned them up as best as he could. And after he had painted the mirrors, he accidentally dropped one and put a mark on it on the inside. So. What we did, or what he had the pinstriper do, is put a little star uh, in there so it kind of draws your eye to it. However, it doesn't make you look at the blemish, it makes you look at the star. Same thing on the gas cap and on the back. So I'm not sure if you can see it on camera or not, but there's a couple of little stars here and there, and just a couple of small imperfections that now blend in with the rest of the car. Very simple, very subtle, and uh, I like it, but I probably would have done a little bit more, again, subtle, but 
I may have followed this body line here and down. I may have done something around this little body line all the way around the window. Maybe something around the keyhole like I did mine. And then again, you got this body line that comes up and around there. I may have done something with that. Also, maybe a little touch around the tail lights. Maybe a little bit more around the gas cap, but at the end of the day, this is Dad's project, not mine. And I've done to my car what I liked. He's done to his car what he likes. And I'm all for it, you know, with his car. I, I really like everything that he's done, and it's uh, I, it's a beautiful car. So, like I said, it's it's his project, not mine. I may have done a few things different, but he's building it for him. He's driving it, not me. Although I may drive it once in a while. Man, what a beautiful day down here on the beach. Tide's coming in, a little bit of a breeze. Hopefully Buddy comes back for his truck before too long. As you can see, this is the seaweed line. This is how far the water comes up on a normal basis. And Buddy's truck is certainly in front of that. So as we are just wandering around down here on the beach, I figured uh, I would do some Q&A from my Instagram post yesterday. I gotta watch where I'm going here because the rocks can be a little jagged but some uh, Q&A basically I had some questions uh, asked of me that I uh, encourage people to reach out and ask and uh, we'll start with the first one which was Ms. Blue Collar and Ms. Blue Collar asked would you do the toe of Satan challenge so first of all no I would not secondly if those of you who do not know what the toe of Satan is it's a lollipop that is super, super hot. And the challenge is you got to put it in your mouth and keep it there for five minutes. Technically, you're not supposed to spit. Granted, drooling is somewhat uncontrollable. Laughing hysterically, sometimes crying like Ms. Blue Collar and Blue Collar Dipper did on their challenge, which I will post right up here. Um, anyways, so the answer to that question simply is no, I would not do that challenge. Granted, I've been putting the word out there that we're getting very, very close to 300 subscribers. And I think we're sitting at 233 right now. And I want to reach out to my audience here to say... What kind of a challenge would you like to see me do? What would you like to see me do to celebrate 300 subscribers? And so put your answers, questions, suggestions in the comments section below. We'll entertain those. Next question came in from uh, Aaron Wilson. And Aaron has a vlog based out of Fredericton, which is about an hour and a half north of where I am. And Aaron asked if I would do bodywork on his vehicle if he brought it to me. Unfortunately, once again, I would have to say no. We are a mechanic shop, unfortunately not a body shop. Granted, we do do some of our own touch-ups um, on some minor jobs, but we are not a body shop. Aaron, I would be willing to give you some names of some very reputable places who are very inexpensive and that would do a very good job for you. Another question comes in from Finding the Beautiful and Justin Connors asked me about the noise in his engine. Well, first of all, it's always nice and highly suggested to have oil in your engine. So if you don't have oil in your engine, you're going to get noisy engine. Simple as that. So my suggestion to quiet your engine down is we've run into this in the past 
there's a treatment that you can use in your engine which basically cleans out a lot of gunk and uh, helps quiet things down and I have uh, and I will suggest to, ju uh, to Justin if he wants to come down I'd be more than happy to uh, do that treatment for him and see if that helps on his Mazda and uh, hopefully quiet that thing down so that he's not having any more uh, issues but uh, anyways that's what I would suggest for him next question comes in from Winnipeg Car Life and his question is simply what's my dream car well as all of you know I am a Mopar guy as far as dream cars go I would probably have to narrow it down to a 68 or 69 Charger um, mostly because I grew up watching the Dukes of Hazard, and uh, you know kind of fell in love with that car just like most people uh, my age did in the you know in the 70s and early 80s um, but I'm also the type of guy just give me one second I'm gonna change hands because I'm holding a poop bag with the other hand here but yes a poop bag Ta -da! So, I like the 68, 69 Chargers. Um, I do like some of the early model Camaros. I'm oh, sorry, late model Camaros, such as the new, uh, uh, the, the newer version that they took and made a Trans Am out of. Uh, I saw one at the Moncton Nationals car show, and we managed to uh, get a pretty good look at that. Um, that's the body style that I would like. My big thing with cars and dream cars is simply I like a car that is appealing to the eye, that goes fast and works well and is reliable, but you don't see yourself coming down the highway every day. So that's why I probably would not own a 68 or 9 Charger. That's probably why I wouldn't own a Corvette Camaro Mustang. Uh, just they're so out there and everybody, I don't say everybody, but you know, they're just a common vehicle. It's just not one of those things. The Chrysler Cordoba, is it a muscle car? No. I tried to make it that way a little bit, but um, it is one of these vehicles you don't see every day. I went to the Moncton Nationals. There was probably over 2,000 cars there. I only saw, technically, I only saw one other Cordoba. There was two or three others of the same body style. Um, the later model Coronets and, uh, and Chargers and stuff, but nevertheless, I did, uh, I, I do love this car simply because I can drive just about anywhere and I'm the only guy there. Um, so have a Cordoba over a Mustang, Camaro, Corvette, Challenger. Um, it has its perks, you know, you, uh, you generally have to be, uh, you have to own one of those type of cars to realize that having one uh, is the uniqueness of its own. So, uh, to, I, I guess to, to come right down to it, to say what is my dream car, I would have to say, uh, not just to be cheesy, but I have to say that I'm probably driving it. Um, there's a lot of ideas that I want to do to that car. Uh, I, I think it would be awesome to put it on airbags. I also think it would be nice to have rack and pinion steering, air conditioning, cruise control, um, you know, stuff like that. A better sound system. You know, I like my music and, of course, you know, Channel 58, Prime Country, I could blare that all the time uh, if I had a proper setup as far as the stereo goes. Anyways guys, that's going to call it quits for this q and I will have more in the future, but for now, that's all she wrote. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and joining me on my uh, weekend as we do this Q&A, and uh, we're going to leave you with some scenes from the beach, not the movie, uh, from where I'm standing right now. Guys, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Give it a big thumbs up for this video, and we will see you in the next upload. Did you see a crab? Look at him, watch him, watch him. He's feisty. <laughs> what do you think, Steve?